Hi there, I'm Don Edgar, Director of Centile Recruitment and thank you for joining us today. We've put together this short video in partnership with the Hull College Group because we know that many of you are struggling with how you actually target the job market yourselves. Now the principles that we'll be talking about in this video will be the same if you're a manager looking for your next role or if you're a student uh, totally new to the job market. Okay, things that we're going to be covering off in this video include a CV, so we'll look at a CV for someone with experience, someone without experience, etc. Um, the type of format that we're going to be using for the CV is a standard recognised format that agencies would use up and down the country. It's also a format that HR managers do like. Okay. We'll also talk for covering letters. So we'll look at a sample covering letter if you're sending your CV to an actual job or maybe one that you're just sending to a business to inquire, are there any current roles at the moment? In the second part of the video, we'll look at into your preparation work and then we'll just finish off by looking at additional tips and things that you can do to help yourself get a job in the market. Okay. Right, here we go then. The first thing you need to consider when you're putting together your CV. You need to make your CV um, look like a newspaper article. It needs to be interesting from start to finish. So if I'm having to read right down here in your CV before I see something of interest, chances are I've put the CV down and I've moved on to the next one. Okay. Most managers will make a decision as to whether that CV is of interest in about the first five seconds. So if you're not getting across the real key meaty points, chances are your CV is down and another one's been picked up instead. Other things to consider, if you don't want any really big paragraphs in there, always think bullet point sentences. So if you've got a big huge paragraph here, another paragraph there, etc., I'm having to read right down here before I'm seeing something maybe of interest. So again, it just feels heavy, it feels weighty, can I really be bothered to go through all of that? Chances are the manager will put the CV down and pick up the next CV instead. You need to make your CV two to three pages long. If you are a student new to the job market, you don't need to have it two pages. One page is absolutely fine, as long as you're getting the key points across. So you don't have to put big gaps or margins or anything silly. Ideally, you should have two to three versions of your CV. And remember, your CV is you right now, and you are the product. So you really need to make sure that your CV is everything it needs to be, okay, to sell yourself, to get that, that interview and ultimately that job. So let's talk through the first example CV that we have then. So this again, this is for someone with experience. So you'd start by putting your name, address, telephone number, email address and LinkedIn on there. So make sure your contact numbers are on and make sure they are up to date and correct. LinkedIn, if you're not familiar with LinkedIn, it's kind of a business version of Facebook. Definitely recommend it. It's free. It's where a lot of businesses actually source candidates from in the market. Just make sure your details are on there and link to as many people you can in business. Then you start by putting your key skills and achievements on. So again, we're trying to look at this being um, quite of interest and relevant to the business based on where it is on the page. You know, the eyes are automatically drawn to the top section of the page, etc. If you're putting bullet point sentences and you're keeping them specific about your experience, then the interest is, is drawn from the manager. About five to seven bullet point sentences is absolutely fine. Um, and try to keep them around saving time, saving money, or making money. So if you're a, a, head, of a head of a procurement, a buyer, etc., then you think, well, I save money, that's not a problem. If you're a salesperson, you think, well, I, say, I, I make money for the business, so that's not a problem. But an admin person might be looking at this video and thinking, well, you know, I do none of those things. But you do. Chances are you've maybe changed the filing system, the way that documents are retrieved in the past. You've made it easier for, for the rest of the staff to be able to get those, made the business more productive. So just try and think of all those types of things that you've done. Um, and give examples that show the level of work that you've had and responsibility. So if you have managed a team of 10 people, tell them you've managed a, a team of 10 people. Tell them what types of people you've managed, different professions, etc. Or maybe you've buddied someone new coming into the business or trained an apprentice. Again, it just shows what kind of level you're used to working at. Next thing you'd add a, prof a short um, profile about yourself, just one or two lines, absolutely fine. I've given you an example on here. So I've put versatile and efficient accountant with um, extensive experience in the manufacturing industry. So straight away, the person reading it likes the look of the key achievements, knows what he does, knows where, what industry he's used to working in, etc. So that makes it very relevant for that business. Um, employment history, dates of employment, company name um, and position. I don't mean to actually have those. I don't mean to put dates of employment and then put your dates of employment over type whatever I've written there. 
So dates of employment, if you have got a lot of movement or maybe you've had a lot of temp jobs being made redundant, just put that next to the dates in brackets. It explains it, it's less question marks on your CV the better. The company name um, and then your position. So let's say you have a weird and wonderful title that you think is fantastic, but out in the wider market that, that title is known as something totally different. Put the job title in, but maybe put in brackets what it actually means. Because again, a company needs to know what, what you're used to doing in order to get you that interview. Uh, when I was about 19, I was a systems administrator for a business. I thought it was a fantastic title at that age. But I was getting calls about IT jobs. Not, not what I did. I was an admin girl at the end of the day. So I would have been better just putting administrator or at least putting it into the brackets. Okay. Next thing then, you'd open with a couple of lines about the company. I'll give you an example again. So made up company limited are a global steel manufacturer that make products for the construction industry. So again, if I'm in the steel uh, production um, industry or I'm a manufacturer of products or I'm dealing with companies in the construction industry, your CV is very, very relevant. So you really need to get through with all of those points if you can. Again, add some key bullet points. Again, make them meaty, five to seven, pair job, etc. That said, if you've had 20 years at one business and two weeks at another business, you would have more bullet points at the one 20 years and just maybe one or two at the one that was a couple of weeks. You'd add your key achievements in. Everyone's had some real successes at different businesses. Try to think of one or two pair company you've worked at. Um, if there's a gap in your experience, maybe you've taken take time out to raise a family. I have in the past. Everyone does it. Maybe you've taken time out to, to take care of a sick relative. Just explain those gaps in there. Again, it's less question marks for the manager reading through it. Again, then you'd move on to your next company, etc., until you've kind of finished your, the feel of your CV. So qualifications, um, any relevant qualifications. If the company is asking for someone with a CIPD qualification in HR, for example, then maybe move that up to your key skills and achievements for that particular job when you're sending that one out. But ultimately, your CV, uh, your qualification should all be listed a little bit further down. Once you've got, say, five to ten years experience in a business, you really don't need to worry about putting your GCSEs in anymore, as long as you've got some practical experience behind you. Um, people are more interested in the work side after that point. If you haven't, or you're still pushing to get into the, the chosen market, then absolutely keep those on. Um, any systems used, if you've used Excel, spreadsheets, Word, etc., they're all key selling points for you. They're all things that businesses are interested in, so make sure you're putting them on there. <clears throat> If you've got a driving license and a car, fantastic selling point no matter what the job is because it means you can be more flexible over location, etc. So again, make sure it's on your CV. And hobbies, just a couple of lines that make you a person rather than just a name on a piece of paper. Be careful with hobbies. Sometimes people put together very, very short CVs but huge details on what they like to do in the, in the, the private time. I don't mention things like socialising with friends. We all like to have a good time when we go out, but does the potential employer need to know that? Um, be careful about any sports clubs that you support. You might be an avid Arsenal fan, but a Manchester United fan reading that document might not like that. So you need to just bear in mind how that could be perceived. Okay. Right, so let's move on to the CV of someone without experience. And so this is someone, um, a student new to the market or maybe a school leaver. Again, you'd start with the same kind of details, your key achievements, etc. And those could be from your courses or maybe any voluntary work, etc. you've done. Profile, so again, add a couple of sentences. An example I've given here is versatile and capable microbiology graduate seeking to expand my experience within the pharmaceutical industry. So again, I know what you do and what you're looking for. Qualifications. So this time we've moved your qualifications further up because it's more relevant for that type of a CV. You really are, that's your key selling point at the moment. So you really need to make sure you're getting that across. Um, study projects. Because you won't have had the actual work experience as such in your chosen area, but you've maybe worked on relevant study projects during the time at college or university, then these are things that you really need to be getting into here. Again, bullet point sentences, make it interesting, make it relevant, etc. If you have had any employment history, so maybe you've paid your own way to, um, to go to college or university and you've had a part-time job in a shop or maybe worked in a bar, etc., just put that down because it just shows you that you're hard working, it maybe shows that you're good with people, etc. And also, dependent on where you've worked, it might show you're very branded in the past if you've worked for some very good company names. If you did do... Um, 
any of these roles that were during term time, part time, etc. You don't want it to look like you've job hopped. So again, put next to the dates, part time, during study, etc. Just to explain that away. You then go on to your systems used, Excel, Word, Outlook, etc. If you are an IT person, you've used lots and lots of systems. You can either put it in here, but if you think that your CV is going to be going past that two to three page mark, they maybe have an additional page that lists all of your systems. Okay, and the same goes with a project manager that maybe worked on a lot of extensive projects. There's nothing wrong with keeping your CV as it is at two to three pages, but then having a separate document listing those types of things down. And other information, clean driving license, and again onto your hobbies. So questions I often get asked then when people are putting together your CV. Um, what if you've got too much experience to fit onto the two to three pages? What I would say is I had a coffee with an international director of a big company a couple of days ago and his CV was two pages long. If he can do it, I'm sure we can. So really, as long as you're getting out those meaty points, the interesting things that companies in, are interested in, that's absolutely fine. You don't need to tell them your life history in, the, in other regards. Should my photo go on my CV? I love this one. Um, it's a tricky one, in all honesty, I'd probably say no. Most agencies in the UK, UK would take your photo off your CV anyway because it could cause discrimination. And even if you look like Brad Pitt, you may get some companies out there that don't like Brad Pitt. So it's worth just not having that on, just don't cause anything that might cause you not to get uh, that interview. Will I be considered overqualified for a specific role? Absolutely. So maybe have a dumbed down version of your CV. If you've been a director in the past, have a version that says you're a manager, etc. Or if you've been a manager and you want an assistant manager post, just play it down a little bit. There's nothing wrong with doing that. People do it all the time in business. It's not lying on a CV. You're not exaggerating your, your skills. You're downgrading yourself so that you can get something in the market. And people often get worried when they do see director on a CV. You may think it makes you sound fantastic. It does. But equally, if I'm a business and I'm looking to employ someone that I then want to manage, will a director want to be taking orders from me? So you need to really think about it in those regards, how it could be perceived. Um, and how can I get experience in my desired industry? So if you are a student, totally new, or maybe you've worked in the hospitality industry for 20 years and you want to move into manufacturing now, if you are struggling with getting into that area, the best thing to do is to offer to volunteer. So when you're putting your covering letter out, offer to do a month three with the business to gain experience, etc. And you'd be surprised how many businesses will take you up on that. Right, what you need to do next then, you need to review your current CV. Um, go through it, make sure it's in the kind of format, again, it's to the point, etc. that we've discussed. Blow your own trumpet. So many people don't know how to actually brag about their experience and sell themselves, which is absolutely fine. You know, it's, it's, there's no problem with that. But the best way to get it onto this CV document is to go home, give your, your wife or your son or your best friend a pad and pen, make them a cup of tea, sit down and just for half an hour say, I just want to brag about everything I've done in businesses. I want to tell you about the successes I've had and the different things that I've worked on. Because you're in a, you're in a comfortable environment, you feel safe in there. So chances are that you will be able to come up with some good things. And there may be some things that you think, nope, nope, nope. But there's a couple of real key ones you want to get on your CV. Okay. I um, put together two to three versions of your CV, as we mentioned. Now, myself, I could have a CV for being a, um, an admin person, a manager, a recruitment person, etc. A student totally new to the market could have a CV that was focused on their chosen skill set and where they want to take their career. But they can maybe also have one that's focused more on customer service, admin roles, etc., just for generally getting a job at the end of the day to pay bills. Um, and check it and check it again because the amount of time I read a CV and it's got spelling error, errors, grammar, uh, grammar errors, etc. One mistake's fine, a couple of mistakes maybe, but if you've got continuous errors in there, it just makes you look sloppy. So read it, proof it, give it to someone else, ask them to check it for you, etc. Really make sure you get that document correct. Now we're going to move on to covering letters then. And the first covering letter we've got is for someone that's applying for a job. So again, contact details at the top. Mark the, um, mark the letter private and confidential. So if you're sending a letter out and a CV out in post, if it's marked private and confidential, it's guaranteed to get opened by that person and that manager. Don't get me wrong, directors who have PAs, their PAs will open their post in that regard. But most people will only open their own if it says that. 
That said, a lot of applications nowadays are done via job sites, uh, via agencies, um, etc., or maybe via emails to companies uh, direct. But again, you need to really get make sure that's on there. It makes it relevant for that person. Make sure the manager's name's on the position, etc., company name, etc. Dear Mr. Blah, you, you, you ideally go straight into what you want to talk to them about. So this guy is an accountant. He wants to talk to them about accountant roles. So he's put here, please find attached a copy of my up-to-date CV for your consideration with regards to the above-mentioned position. So straight away, they know why he's sending his document to them. As you will see, I have extensive experience in accounts, sorry, in accounts management from my time working as a manufacturing accountant with Made Up Company Limited. I've also worked specifically on project-related accounts, which I know is another key requirement for the role, and thus feel that I would be an excellent match for this position. So again, he's drawn out why he wants to work specific, specific, specifically for that business. Um, they then feel that he wants to work with them. He's not just sent that letter out to a thousand companies, etc. Um, he's made it very relevant for the job as well with what he's put in there. I would very much appreciate the opportunity of meeting with yourselves to discuss the possibility of my joining your company in more detail and I'm available for immediate interview if required. So again, he's kind of opened up very friendly, gone straight into why he's sending the letter um, and then asked for that potential next contact to be made. Thank you for your kind attention this matter. If you require any further information, please feel free to contact me. I look forward to hearing from you soon. Um, you would close with your sincerely or faithfully. It's sincerely if you know the name of the person you're sending the letter to or faithfully if it's DSR, madam. Okay. And again, a, a cover in letters doesn't have to be war and peace. Keep it quite short. The next letter then that we're going to look at is for someone that's just sending a CV on, on spec. They want to know are there any current jobs at that business. So again, private and confidential, manager's name, etc. So this one's for microbiology stroke lab related roles. I know from my experience as a recent science graduate that another made up company limited have an excellent reputation in, of manufacturing pharmaceutical products. Having just graduated of a 2-1 in microbiology, I'm now actively seeking employment within your industry and another made up company limited are definitely a key target employer for me. So again, that business feels like you really, you've looked into them, you want to work with them. I would very much appreciate the opportunity of meeting with yourselves to discuss the possibility of my joining your company in more detail and I'm, I'm available for immediate interview if required. If you did want to offer to volunteer with a business, that's potentially where you would be putting it or um, as well actually where the job title is maybe put up there, voluntary roles. Thank you for your kind attention this matter and if you require any further information, please feel free to contact me. Look forward to hearing from you and again, close the letter. So what you need to do next, you need to put together two sample co um, covering letters. So the first one would be for a live job, and it's just a draft version. And the second one would be for when you want to send it on spec to a business. The idea is that once you've got those, you just need to tweak them and change them around the, um, the relevant company that you're applying to. The same would go for your CV. I, and don't rely on a covering letter. Um, so many managers, and I've worked in HR for a long time before I moved into recruitment, what tends to happen, let's say this is a covering letter with the CV attached, first thing the manager will do is turn it over. They'll start reading the CV. If it's not in there, in that top section, chances are they'll never even look at this. And they might not look at it until interview stage anyway. But you need to make sure that, yes, absolutely put a covering letter together, make it relevant, but equally don't rely on it. I hope you found that useful and we're going to join you shortly again for the second part of the video.